NBC. From WDSU, News Channel 6 is on your side. Meningitis vaccines are supposed to be mandatory for college students, but many have found a loophole around it. Nonetheless, more than 700 D Dillard students lined up for the shots today at Dillard University. Good evening, I'm Norman Robbins. And I'm Chris Fairbairn. It comes actually the day after students learned a classmate died of a rare infection. But why weren't they vaccinated before? WDSU News Channel 6 anchor Tazlin Alfonso was on your side with how they avoided the shot until now. It's tonight's big local story. Tazlin. Well, good evening. It is required by state law that college students get meningitis vaccinations before entering school, but there is a loophole. You know, by law, you're supposed to have that shot. Yeah, but um, nobody didn't tell me it's not, on a, it's not required. Student Kristen Clark says she just got her meningitis vaccine after hearing the news. It's branded by his past of uh, meningitis, and I was just informed. All my professors just emailed me and just said you need to come out and, you know, come get a shot for the meningitis. Okay. Well, Dr. Corey Abear says all college students should get the shot, but unfortunately, many students are going around the requirement. And so what they do is when they go online, they click the, the box that says, um, I don't want to take these shots for my religious beliefs, and then they don't have to get the immunization. It's becoming a problem. Freshman Patrice Campbell understands it's a problem she doesn't want to face and is hoping all her classmates get vaccinated. We need to take it more seriously, like the whole disease thing, because this might not be the only thing. He might have had something else. Who knows? Dr. Abear says no immunizations work 100% in fighting off infections, but they're good at fighting the majority of infections, and he has this message for parents. They need to make sure that these children, young adults, get this vaccine because it can save their life. Now, Dr. A. Bear says that the vaccine lasts between three to five years. On your side, live from Gentilly, Tazlin Alfonso, WDSU, News Channel 6. Now, post Katrina, the state suspended its requirement to have college students get the vaccination because there was a shortage of the meningitis vaccine, but that requirement was reinstated December 2007. And now, this story you may be seeing some rainfall outside your windows this evening. That was not the case earlier today, however, at Bogafalaya Park in Covington, where our camera found these folks enjoying an outside lunch. WDSU News Channel 6 Weather Plus Chief Meteorologist Dan Milham is on your side with what's happening now. Dan? A bit of rain in the area now. Some of you are seeing it, some of you not. That looks like it's going to be the case right through morning. This is our first alert radar network. You can see the little green patches there, and that's what I call it, just patchy rain. Some places getting a little shower or even light rain, other places not. But there's more of it coming around. So here it is on our computer model. You see the green patches in the area right through Thursday morning. Now it's not looking stormy, but it does look like there'll be rain around, maybe where you are, maybe where you're going. Then Thursday afternoon, rain moves away. Friday looks drier and colder. More on that when I come back. All right, we'll see you then, Dan. And don't forget the WDSU News Channel 6 Weather Plus radar is always live on the weather section of WDSU.com. A Slidell man has admitted to taking pornographic pictures of boys in his neighborhood. Danny Darty is charged with possession and three counts of production of child pornography. He has been in prison since his arrest last May. Investigators say he had 50,000 pornographic photos on a computer. Doherty is also accused of taking pornographic pictures of neighborhood boys ages between 12 and 14. While it's a great victory to take a predator like Doherty off the street and send him to prison and separate him from society, it's really too late for those kids who were photographed uh, and, and it's really uh, too late for those children who were, who were actually exploited. They've now been victimized. What we have to do is get the message out there help our kids protect themselves and actually protect them. Darty faces a sentence of 15 years behind bars on each count of child porn production. In Homa, the search is on for bank robber caught on camera. Police say the man seen here with the gray hair and light colored jacket robbed the Whitney Bank on St. Charles Street. They say he told the teller he had a gun when he demanded money. The suspect is believed to be between the years of 50 and 60. Time is up for hourly motels in Jefferson Parish. Today, the Parish Council banned motels from renting rooms by the hour. Police say this is part of a crackdown on drug use and prostitution. 
In St. Tammany Parish, police say a hotel robber has struck again. The Super 8 on Holiday Drive in Covington was held up last night. The suspect's description matches the man in this surveillance video. He is accused of holding up two other hotels in Slidell last weekend. If you recognize him, call Crime Stoppers at 822-1111. Also from St. Tammany, two months after a murder in Covington, St. Tammany Parish deputies make an arrest. WDSU News Channel 6 reporter Heath Allen is on your side to explain why the victim may not have been the intended target. Um, uh, a weapon was produced and uh, a shot to the upper body or neck or head area is what killed Mr. Fritt. St. Tammany Parish Sheriff Jack Strain says Covington City worker Eric Frick was a victim of a drug crime he had nothing to do with. We don't believe um, that, that Mr. Frick had any knowledge of criminal activity that went on on his property or, or that, um, uh, that his wife uh, had any knowledge of criminal activity. Tonight, St. Tammany deputies have this man behind bars, 31-year-old Sean Hammond. The sheriff says Hammond has a past drug record and was already on probation, but he didn't act alone. We also believe that there was a second party involved in that homicide that we continue to look for as we speak. Strain says the two men came looking for Eric Frick's step-grandson and for cocaine, all the way from Baker, Louisiana. And we believe through facts of the investigation that drugs were uh, the common denominator. Now, 31-year-old Sean Hammond faces a charge of second-degree murder. On your side in Covington, Heath Allen, WDSU, News Channel 6. 31-year-old Sean Hammond will appear before a judge in Covington for an initial hearing Friday morning. A soldier from the North Shore has been found dead in his New York base. The Army has yet to release the cause of death of Specialist Lawrence Holloway of Ponchatoula. The 29-year-old's body was discovered in his barracks at Fort Drum in northern New York. The medic had spent nearly a year in Afghanistan. Kenner authorities say an autopsy shows smoke inhalation as the cause of death of a 69-year-old woman. Betty McNo died when her garage apartment burned early Tuesday morning. Fire investigators have yet to determine the cause, but they say they don't believe it's anything suspicious. And now here's a look at the fiery crash that stalled the I-610 for hours this afternoon. A viewer sent us this photo of a pickup truck engulfed in flames after a collision with a dump truck. The eastbound lanes near the St. Bernard exit were closed for about four hours. Luckily, no one was seriously injured in the crash. And here's a heads up for travelers flying out of the Gulfport Biloxi International Airport. U.S. Airways has announced new service starting in May from the Mississippi coast to Charlotte. A company spokesman says the airline is responding to what he calls exciting growth in the area. Next, a warehouse on the East Bank is about to get more festive. Hear what we'll be parading in. And fighting the flu. Dr. Corey Bear is on call with the best ways to keep you from getting what's going around. And WDSU News Channel 6 is proud to be back on cable systems in Mississippi, in Harrison and Hancock counties. You can find us on Channel 6 and High Definition Channel 466. Ellen has the experts who can help you have a better home and a better you. This is fun. I'm, oh, that's not good, is it? <laughs> Plus, Natasha Bedingfield. This is my current All new Ellen. Is. Tomorrow at 10 a.m. on News Channel 6. Christian Street Furniture. Veterans at Causeway. Hey girl, looking good. New outfit, nails done, hair. I just did my taxes and they gave me my money on the spot. Really? I went to Fast Tax and they treated me right. You trust them? They're professionals, been around since 1992. Yeah? They work to get me my maximum refund. After all, it's my money. You are so right. And I got my money on the spot. Can't beat that. I better get to Fast Tax. Call 942-8000 and tell a friend about Fast Tax today. Don Bone Buick Pontiac GMC is starting the new year off right by extending our year-end clearance into 08. You heard right. Come in today and get 08 models for 07 prices. Take $7,000 off the MSRP on new 08 GMC Yukons. Or get an 08 GMC Sierra for only $16,995. Hurry down to Don Bone Buick Pontiac GMC on Lapalco Boulevard or visit BoneZone.com and enjoy last year's prices today.
Short hand. Dollars down again. Oh, it's brutal. No, it's feeble. It's dropping like a lead balloon. Tanking. It's, it's a meme. It's just in free fall. It's pathetic. Hey, big O, what do you got there, fella? Double cheeseburger from the dollar menu. Did I say weak? Dollar's looking strong. Dollar's looking good. Very good. Hey, uh, Owen, uh, how you fix this on fries, buddy? I'm good on fries. Thanks, Dave. That's cold, man. Just that I'd ask. The McDonald's beefy, cheesy double cheeseburger. Just one of the extravagant choices on the dollar menu. You know, just caulking around old windows is gonna save you lots of money. Could I try that? Just one compact fluorescent bulb can save $30. You know, sealing and insulating your home, you can save a lot of money on your heating and cooling bill. For more information on energy-saving products and projects, just visit Lowe's.com slash energy. Lowe's has more Energy Star appliances in stock than anyone. It really save you some big bucks. Lowe's, let's build something together. We tell you every week what's going around at work, at school, and probably at home. Tonight, WDSU News Channel 6 medical editor Dr. Corey Hebert is on call to tell you what's making people sick and the possible treatments that are available. Doctors all over New Orleans tell me what they're treating right now is the flu. You hear about it every year, but this is very important information that bears repeating. Here are some of the flu symptoms you should look for. Fever that's usually very high, headache, tiredness that can be extreme, coughing, sore throat, a runny or stuffy nose, and body aches. Diagnosing the flu can be very difficult. The symptoms can mimic a number of other illnesses. That's why you must see your doctor to make sure that it's the flu. Usually the best treatment for the flu is bed rest and plenty of fluids, or your doctor may prescribe an antiviral medi medication like Tamiflu. And preventive measures are a very smart thing to do as well. The best thing to do to keep flu away, get a flu shot every year. These are the two types you can get. The first is the flu shot. It's approved for use in people older than six months. The second type is a nasal spray flu vaccine. That one is approved for use if you're a healthy individual between the ages of 2 and 49. The symptoms of the flu usually last anywhere from seven days to about two weeks. I'm medical editor Dr. Corey Bear on call for WDSU News Channel 6. If you have a health question for Dr. Hebert, email him from the homepage of WDSU.com. Our medical editor may answer on the air. The world is getting bigger. We're talking about Mardi Gras world and where you'll soon be able to see floats without crossing the river. Well, the Hornets may be one of the hottest teams in the NBA, but somehow the Portland Trail Blazers have managed to cool them off. I'm Keely Fulton, live at the New Orleans Arena. I'll have a preview of the game coming up next. Hurry on down New Orleans to Dine Bone for WDSU is Carnival Central. And this is our 60th year covering the parades and crews across our area. Mardi Gras World will soon have a large presence on the East Bank. Right now, their Algiers site has 500,000 square feet, but it's just not enough room for them. WDSU News Channel 6 anchor Tazlin Alfonso is on your side to explain why they're expanding and taking part of their business to the East Bank. As the floods get bigger, you want to be on the East Bank. I mean, 90% of our work is for parade. Most of our work is for parades over there. That's the main reason the Kern family has already moved some of their business to the East Bank, like this Endymion Den, which houses some of the crew's floats in the lower Jefferson Davis neighborhood. But they're also planning on having a site along the river where the old river city used to be. We want to renovate it. We're going to renovate it and fix it up. We're going to make it, you know, where you've got a, a beautiful view of the river from inside the facility. And we'll be able to do the same thing we do here. You'll have tours during the day and parties at night. Another reason the company is moving is because of Algiers Crossing, a development of apartments and condos. It's going up right next to Mardi Gras World, eating up 200 square feet of their facility. Barry Curran says he's partnering in the development and is grateful business is booming and they're expanding. Now we feel really good that we're seeing an upturn not only in tourism, but our Carnival customers, they're doing well. They're doing really, really well. They're strong, um, they're, they're, they're growing, they're building new floats. We appear to be just about completely back from Katrina. The only thing that's going to make this year a little soft is the fact that it's so early. Visitorship won't be as high because people are still paying off their Christmas credit cards and there are no spring breaks this early. On your side, Tazlin Alfonso, WDSU, News Channel 6. Mardi Gras World's East Bank facility should be open for business in the next six months. And of course, WDSU.com is the only website you need this carnival season. We have the parade schedules and Mardi Gras guide Arthur Hardy previews each crew. 
Plus, before you head to the parade, you can check the weather forecast, and it's all in the Carnival Central section of WDSU.com. And now to our weather on this cool, I'm going to say cold Wednesday after such a warm Tuesday. Yeah, it was chilly and that mm -hmm. wind, boy, it kept that Mardi Gras flag flapping uptown. <laughs> and now we are dealing with some rain for some of us. And News Channel 6 Weather Plus Chief Meteorologist Dan Milham is here to tell us where it is. It, is it moving out yet? Well, it, the rain that's on our radar, and you can see it for yourself on our live first alert Doppler radar, and it's on the North Shore, and it's kind of diminishing. You can watch a brief time lapse of it over the last hour here. So it's moving on, and there isn't much around right now, but there's still more in the area, so the chance of rain continues into the morning hours of Thursday. Cloudy skies all around us now. Temperatures are still in the 50s. They probably won't change much during the evening hours but probably will change tomorrow. Our wind is north just three miles an hour now. Looks like it's going to be stronger than that with humidity already high. Cloudy skies, damp and cold is the way it feels out there. 50s through the evening. I think that's going to be the deal and a few spots of rain. If you don't see it, well, you're going to be in the majority. When I say 40% coverage, remember that means 60% don't see it. But I think it'll be about 40% coverage in the morning. It could be more, but again, I'm not talking storms. I'm talking light rain, drizzle, kind of cloudy, more wind. And by then, that wind, I think, will have dropped our temperatures to the 40s. So morning may be on the uncomfortable side, cold-wise. Jacket weather, maybe umbrella, too. I think the rain will be out of here by before lunchtime tomorrow, what rain there is. And again, if it misses you, well, you'd probably be... One of the lucky ones, but some places are likely to get it. Then 50s tomorrow afternoon. We got to the upper 50s in most places today. It looks like low 50s tomorrow, plus more wind. So that feels colder because of the wind chill. And tomorrow evening, while we're in the 50s this evening, I expect 40s tomorrow evening and more wind. So tomorrow evening may feel quite a bit colder than this as we head for a really cold Friday morning. We're talking about clouds, some rain in the area wind and cold. I will generously give tomorrow's expected weather a five on the darn scale. And again, hoping I'm not being generous because it's not the kind of weather will stop you from doing anything, but it may be pretty uncomfortable. The winds on the coastal forecast 15 to 20 for the coastal waters in the morning, increasing later in the day as a front increases our winds. 260 WDSU. That's the number to call. You can hear our forecast on the phone anytime. Now, for the weekend parades, Friday evening parades looks kind of chilly, but the warming trend will have begun by then. Now, Saturday, there's a good chance that some rain will be around in the morning. So the 1 o'clock parade on Saturday eh, is kind of threatened. But I think by Saturday evening and for Sunday, they're looking okay. Well, you know, family gras this weekend, too, mm -hmm. in Metairie and also in Gretna, so I hope it uh, at least holds off for that. Well, part of the weekend, as I say, Saturday morning looks yeah. like it's threatened, but even that could be rain in some places and not in others. A little luck, you know, you could get away with it. Right. All right, mm -hmm. just keep the well, foul weather gear okay for the family, right? right? Keep <laughs> it in the trunk, just in case. <laughs> Thanks, you, Dan. <laughs> well, it's b-ball night in the arena where the uh, Hornets are hosting the Trailblazers, and here's our host, uh, Mr. Sports, Fletcher Mahal. That's right. We're going to talk about the Hornets in one second, but first, some Saints news. One of the weakest positions on the Saints last year was the defensive line. So today, the team hired a tough guy to strengthen that unit up. Recently fired Ole Miss head coach Ed Orgeron is now the Saints D-line coach. A Louisiana native, Orgeron is known for his five fiery and passionate demeanor. Orgeron is 46 years old, a graduate of South Lafouche High School, Northwestern State University, and universally respected in all coaching circles. And now to the Red Hot Hornets, who are 8-1 and one this month. Keeley Fulton is live at the arena to preview their game tonight against Portland. Keeley? Well, Fletcher, I'm willing to bet that at the beginning of the season, no one expected tonight's Hornets Blazers matchup to be a game putting number one against number one. Of course, the Hornets are number one in the Southwest Division, and Portland is number one in the Northwest Division. And though the players won't admit it, the Trailblazers are a team they probably circled as a game they should win at the start of the season. But Portland is one of the few teams that's had the Hornets number. The Bees may have. 500 records or better against the likes of Dallas, Phoenix, and the Lakers, but they're just one and two against the Trailblazers. The two games that we lost, you know, the one game I thought we really should have won, uh, we lost at 93 90. That's when Tyson got kicked out. The next game, we just couldn't make a shot, you know, uh, and we played their style, we played their tempo. Uh, we, we allowed their zone to kind of take us out of our up tempo game. So we, we just got to make sure tonight that we uh, 
coming in with that a defense, you know, defensive mindset, but also uh, look to put the tempo in our favor. Now, Byron Scott also says that Brandon Roy, who was last year's Rookie of the Year, has given the Hornets problems this season. He averages 19.3 points per game, and that leads the team. He also says that Portland's three-point shooting has given the Hornets fits as well this season. The Blazers are second in the league from behind the arc. Live on your side at the New Orleans Arena, Keely Fulton, WDSU. News Channel 6. <coughs> Keely, thank you very much. Lots of good information. Also, two big college basketball games tonight. UNO hosts Western Kentucky in a Sun Belt Conference game, and Tulane welcomes SMU to Fogelman Arena. We'll have highlights of both of these games tonight at 10. And now back to football in day three of the annual Senior Bowl in Mobile, Alabama. Yesterday, we told you about several linebackers the Saints could be interested in. Today, we've got a defensive tackle for Saints fans to keep an eye on. Six foot four inch, 310 pound. Dre Moore from the University of Maryland has been extremely impressive this week, projected to go between the second and fourth rounds. Moore is considered a workout warrior and a guy who'll be a boom or bust player in the pros. And that's a look at Sports Hornets highlights tonight at 10. All right, big old guy. Next, rebuilding Treme. Volunteers and locals make some old houses centerfold worthy. And here's a look at what's coming up tonight in prime time here on News Channel 6. At 7 o'clock, there are $9 million cases in place on Deal or No Deal, followed by all new episodes of Law & Order Criminal Intent at 8 and Law & Order at 9. Tonight at 10, an update on the case of a 72-year-old Morero man found brutally murdered and his home set on fire to cover up the crime. What police now know and what you can do to help. On your side tonight at 10 on WDSU. Old windows are drafty. Here's a look at one of the stories we're working on on new at 10 o'clock. A 72 year old man found murdered in his home, which was then set on fire. Tonight, how you can be a crime stopper and help bring his killer to justice. Well, we're on your side from New York to New Orleans. Today, about 40 people from the corporate uh, office of the Hearst Co Corporation, parent company to WDSU, spent the day priming a house on St. Anne. Hearst is working with the group Rebuilding Together New Orleans to bring back several hurricane-damaged homes here in the city. They'll even feature them in the Hearst magazine. So this week, we are finishing up, I think, about four or, four or five Hearst houses getting them ready to be prepped for magazines and pretty things like that. So I know our homeowners are really excited. Our crews are really excited, and it's just really great to be closing out those houses. The Hearst Corporation is the majority owner of Hearst Argyle Television, which operates WDSU. It's about the sixth house they've done that so far. That is terrific. Yeah. That's hard work. Thanks for being here, guys. And you can get the news online anytime at WDSU.com. We'll see you back here at 10. Good night. Get more for 